South Windsor Catholic Church's 2016 financial report. You'll receive this weekend two separate reports. One is a bulletin insert that details the finances of both parishes in South Windsor. The other is a statistical uh, booklet that details every sacramental uh, episode since 1941 at St. Francis and since 1961 at St. Margaret Mary's. Firstly, let me thank you for your overwhelming generosity to the mission of the two parishes, soon to be one parish. The Finance Council met this past Thursday to discuss the financial merging of assets and the creation of a new parish, parish that will consist of two church buildings and two offices. A new name for this parish will be approved by Archbishop to symbolize our new reality. Uh, and basically what you'll have is under Connecticut state law, um, the parish name is the corporation name. With one parish, there'll be a new name for that corporation. So no one's going to say, I'm going to St. Elsewhere's, but you'll make out your check, St. Elsewhere donation, and you'll have the two churches. A parish is a territory that has a church in it with a pastor signed by a bishop, and the pastor's entrusted the care of all your souls which I have to answer for on Judgment Day. Um, I'm really glad there's no casino being built in town. <laughs> I want to thank, again, those parishioners who made suggestions for the new uh, saint, the new patron of our church. Uh, we can't have any repeats. Um, it's a symbolic uh, and also legal uh, title that we need. It's always good to have another saint praying for you. Um, so far, there have been 30 parishes slated to close in the Archdiocese, though this is not the final number. I was invited by the Chancery to meet on Tuesday morning to discuss other possible closures. We presently have 186 priests actively serving. The average age is 61. Father Carlos is 31 and I am 50. By the year 2025, actuaries tell us that there will be 119 priests. And there's a priest who recently ordained, Father uh, Phil O'Neill, who will be the last priest in the Archdiocese in 2065. The only problem is that he's been taken up as a chaplain for the military, where there's a great need. But he'll be back after his 20 years of service in the military to close and turn off the lights in 2065. The plan of the Archdiocese is to create links between not just parishes, but also ministries, such as hospitals and schools. For instance, perhaps St. James in Manchester would be a pastor of St. James, Assumption Church, and Manchester Hospital. Supposedly, it's on the books that this would be St. Francis of Assisi Church, St. Margaret Mary Church, the chaplaincy at East Catholic High School, interreligious affairs, I forget what else. This uh, job description keeps growing, and they call it a pastorate. The number of pastor, uh, pastorates are reducing parishes from 213 parishes down to 115. Um, so probably in the end, about 70 parishes will close. This allows for the preservation of beloved places of worship, but also needs to entail the reduction of services. Recently, just a few years ago, South Windsor had five priests. Now it only has two. Now this weekend, Father Carlos took the weekend off, which is very nice, because yesterday I had six phone calls for anointing of the sick, and three of our parishioners passed away. When the time arrives when there's only one priest assigned, there'll be further reduction in masses. Actually, currently, we're only supposed to have four masses, but as the pastor, canon law allows me to provide more for pastoral reasons. That's why we have six. But if uh, Carlos leaves or I leave, and that just one priest is here, there'll only be four masses on a weekend. As your priests, we're uh, very uh, much um, concerned for the pastoral uh, care of all the people and also uh, convenience as well. Uh, our effort to get at least the 15,000 parishioners that identify as Catholic to practice their faith will entail the uh, implementation of a program called Alpha. The Alpha program, named after the Jesus being the Alpha and the Omega, uh, many Catholics know about Jesus. They've heard a great deal about Jesus. He sounds awfully nice, and they've never met the Lord. You're here. You know why you're here, because of your encounter with Jesus Christ and your personal prayer and throughout the days in your, your regular worship. Um, we want the number of practicing Catholics to match the number of those who identify as Catholic. 
In the back of your book on the last page, you'll see a pie chart of religious adherence in South Windsor. South Windsor is 31.1% Catholic, supposedly, it's actually more, but, but 50% identify as, as nothing or non. Um, so that would be our market share that we evangelize. So we're out there to not harass your neighbors, but to give them the meaning of life in Jesus Christ. You'll hear more about this. We'll begin the Alpha program after Easter. I'm very appreciative of the participation in online giving. The program first begun at St. Francis of Assisi from the wisdom of Father Tiano. He had 96 contributors giving $111,616 online. I began it at his prompting. We had 97 contributors in 2016. There's many more now. And they gave a total of $108,335. 307 South uh, St. Francis of Assisi families supported the wider mission of the Archdiocese through the Archbishop's annual appeal and donated $61,370.01, surpassing for the first time the goal set for them by the Archdiocese. Meanwhile, St. Margaret Mary's 526 families out of a total of uh, 2,000, what? 2,000 and 2,247 families donated uh, $177,204.05. It's very impressive. Last year, I believe we were number nine in overall contributions. I think we're number eight. So you'll all get t-shirts that have an eight on the front. <laughs> One of the most impressive things is that we have very few people studying for the priesthood, but St. Margaret Mary's has two. So good for you, and that's because of you. Your example and witness of the faith and your response to their willingness to pursue that vocation is wonderful. At St. Francis, we have about a $24,000 deficit. We had a business manager move from part-time to full-time along with gaining benefits. The problem was that Father Tiano worked at Office of Evangelization, Religious Ed, and that office was closed. Father Tiano came back needing to be paid and his benefits and threw the whole thing out of tilt. So uh, there will be a auction at St. Francis of Assisi to make up for that deficit. We also carried the Catholic, uh, Connecticut Catholic Men's Conference, and we did that for gratis, but I took that off the rolls because it was a great deal of work and took away from the parish work, so they found some other parish, which is very nice. Um, we have plans to enhance the grounds over at St. Francis. We already have a donor, American Silica, donated a patio. Uh, we have a bench over there, but it's sunk into the mud, so if you sit on the bench, you can't get out of the bench. Um, we, they wanted to get a picnic table, but the 7-Eleven is there, and I figure they're all be eating hot dogs. It's no, no, no table, no table. Uh, but it's a nice place for when the seniors come in the vans from the many nursing homes, they can uh, wait for the uh, van there. Uh, to explain part of the salaries that are paid, I can't discuss the lay salaries, but I can discuss the priest salaries. Priests are paid on a, a scale according to year of ordination. Every five years, I get a great big raise. Uh, after 20 years of priesthood, I'm now paid 33000 $938 in addition to my benefits. The benefits include dental, medical, hearing aids if I need them, and car insurance. I pay for my own car and uh, I have to save for my own uh, retirement. I do a TSA and a couple other things. And I get lots of advice. We all get advice about where to invest. Um, Father Carlos receives, because he's a baby priest, $31,068 plus benefits. The benefit package for both of us is $26,381. Lay employees do contribute to their benefit and retirement packages. Uh, the priests pay 15% on in income tax. They're considered self-employed. That's what the IRS said. Tell my boss. Um, and we're also taxed for housing low-income housing over there, the rectory. Uh, the IRS calls it parsonage because we live in a Protestant country and they don't know what a rectory is, so that's parsonage. When I retire, I'll probably get almost $40,000, but no housing. Um, so I'll call my mother and ask if I can go back. Uh, St. Margaret Mary finances. When we joined our bulletins with St. Francis to combine to like eight pages, uh, our refund was cut in half. Uh, extra priests will, um, we don't need extra priests as much because we have a smaller schedule. We, we celebrate about 700 liturgies a year. 
Um, and so when we get a stipend, we get, what's on the other paper, $15 for a daily mass, but I split that with Father Carlos, 20 for the weekend, so he gets 10, I get 10. I don't know how to split 15, so I wait. And then uh, if we bring a priest in, most parishes give uh, the priest $50. We give 75, so we always get a priest, no problem. A lot of the older priests didn't really plan for retirement, so they're still working. They're, you know, they're the working poor, it's strange, it's sad. But, um, but they're great help. Uh, the electrical bill went up because we repaired the light bulbs. Sorry about that. All the parking lot was pitch black. We repaired it and the bill skyrocketed. The roof repairs were made to the east wing over here. We added heating coils and now the wall is not crumbling. So you're welcome, east wing. They pay for it. <laughs> no. Um, masonry work was done to the chimney in the rectory because it was leaking into Father Carlos's room and he complained, he complained. The whole, all over his bed, all soaking wet, that's all right. And the walls in front of the church as you come in uh, were repointed to prevent collapse because when our, our beloved teenagers skateboard on them, they fall apart and it would be our fault. Okay. <laughs> We um, added to our staff a pastoral associate, Tammy Hewitt, who's coordinating expanded efforts for new evangelization, and it's worked out very, very well. We're much more well prepared for the events we're planning. We hosted a mass with Archbishop Blair presiding for families who are affected by crumbling foundations in our communities. The biggest asset they have, and it's, it's worthless until this is addressed uh, by government. We welcomed a, a new music director, Michael Zappala. Hi, Michael, that's his office up there. Thank you for the good music. We've also added uh, parishioners, uh, Ken and Jess Razawan and Phil and Linda Smith to do marriage preparation because what do I know about weddings? I've gone to a lot, I've eaten a lot of chicken, but that's about all I know. Uh, but they do the preparation now. Uh, Ken and Jess are taking a little leave of absence. They just had a little baby Cohen, so he's adorable. Um, and so we were sending a letter Monday to request the Archbishop to merge the two parishes, which you've already experienced. It'll just mean one set of books. Just to go over some of the details to highlight, uh, weekly offertory for St. Francis for a total of $365,516. Um, and then we go down the annual collection, $71,120, down from $77,380. You see there's a, a net loss of $24,000. If we look at the number of, of registered families across town, 1,137, 26 baptisms, 12 first communions, they call them the 12 apostles. 31 confirmations, one adult baptized, four receiving of the church, six weddings or convalidations. You probably know this, uh, Catholic young people don't get married in church anymore. They get married on the beach at Hammonasset with uh, flip flops and, and then they call up and say, oh, can we have a blessing? That's a convalidation. We do a lot of those. And we're happy to do it because your mother cried so much during the wedding on the beach. Okay. Uh, number of funerals, 41. Uh, we have a wonderful funeral uh, ministry that prepares the readings, the music with the family, helps them prepare the eulogies, and a follow-up ministry of bereavement that's just really, um, actually it's probably the best in the Archdiocese. They've done a wonderful job in both parishes. The number of homebound people that were visited, 1,100 uh, visits to those who were um, homebound bring in the Eucharist. Number of families who registered last year in St. Francis, 39. Meanwhile, back here at the ranch, you gave $536,521 in the offertory. Your annual collection went up from 133,000 to 147,238 for a total income of $909,965. It's very impressive. I don't know if you've been to other parishes. This is remarkable, so good for you. Our registered families, 2,247, 47 bouncing babies, 52 first communions, 70 confirmations, one adult baptized, three received in the church, nine weddings, 68 funerals, newly registered families, 70 and 1,040 people were um, served the Eucharist and their homes. I'm just 
overwhelmed by your generosity and your kindness, but particularly in every rite of passage, you come out in droves for your fellow parishioners. Uh, you sing robustly. You receive communion in a very reverent manner. You bring your children to religious education and your grandchildren as well. It's our hope that by having quality liturgies, um, you know, cutting edge technology in the lobby, um, being available to you and flexible for you because the many demands of modern life that we can grow the faith in South Windsor in such a way it will indeed endure. May God bless you and yours uh, in this year of grace. Oh,